Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar, Simplify Oracle ERP Cloud Integration with AST Cloud Connect. My name is Melissa Sider. I'm the VP of Marketing and Communications here at AST and I'll be acting as your hostess for today's webinar. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. Everyone will be muted throughout the presentation, but we do encourage you to ask questions by typing them into the question box in your control panel. Once the presentation has finished, we'll share the questions so that the presenter can respond. We are recording today's session. It will be available on the AST website in about a week. I'm very pleased to have with me today, Piyush Maskey, who is the product manager for our AST Cloud Connect product here at AST. Welcome, Piyush. Good afternoon, everyone. We always like to get started by introducing AST for those of you who may not be familiar with our organization. We are an Oracle Cloud Premier Platinum Partner, and we have a variety of practices that cover a wide range of Oracle products, um, everything from ERP to managed services and all of the pieces in between. We enjoy a very good relationship with Oracle uh, as a Platinum Partner and as a Cloud Premier Partner. Uh, and as you can see along the right-hand side there, we are specialized in a wide variety of Oracle products and solutions. <clears throat> Along the bottom, you can see that we've won a number of workplace awards as well as industry awards in the last several years. Most recently, we were named for the third year in a row to the Chicago Tribune Top 100 Workplaces. So that was very exciting. I'd also like to take a moment to introduce our award-winning middleware practice. <clears throat> the practice has been um, rolling for um, about eight or nine years so far. And um, we've won, again, a number of awards um, through this area, including uh, being recognized as uh, 20 most promising SOA providers in 2015 and winning a Titan Award for SOA integration specifically in 2011. Uh, our security and middleware practice includes practices or uh, uh, competencies in the areas of identity and access management, SOA and BPM, Web Center, Oracle Platform as a Service, as well as Mobile Cloud, <clears throat> as well as a number of leadership presentations at national and international conferences. <clears throat> so our agenda for today is um, we're going to be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, um, why cloud? Um, why cloud integration? Why is it needed? What are the challenges and opportunities related to cloud integration? We'll also look at the features and functions of the AST Cloud Connect product, uh, as well as provide a demonstration and some use cases. And of course, at the end, we will open things up to question and answer. As we look at the need for cloud integration, you know, obviously um, investment and implementation of cloud solutions is increasing on a, a daily basis. Um, as cloud ramps up though, certain on-premise solutions are still viable and still needed in the marketplace. This has triggered a need for quicker integration and minimized integration efforts. As enterprises shift to cloud app applications, that's software as a service or SaaS, and infrastructure as a service, or IaaS. Um, in the Oracle world, uh, you know, there are a whole variety of um, new applications, cloud solutions, um, ERP, HCM, a whole list of them. Um, and these solutions are really becoming accessible to new markets, yet are also introducing uh, greater complexity for integration solutions. In the area of IPaaS, or integration platform as a service, uh, the focus has heavily been on cloud-to-cloud -cloud solutions, and that, that um, is an area of the industry that's growing. But we still see a need to support current complex integration requirements. Some of the challenges uh, with cloud integration. Uh, frequently, organizations get so excited about their cloud solutions that um, perhaps the integration uh, requirements are, um, are an afterthought or not really something that's thought of, uh, thought of in advance. Uh, and also the complexity is often overlooked um, for how to integrate on-premise with uh, cloud solutions. Um, there can be a lack of standardization um, if you have homegrown conversion tools. Um, and all of this kind of combines to make integration solutions time consuming and expensive. We see some opportunities in the evolving IPaaS model um, as point to point connectors may not be enough. Um, you still need cloud to on-premise solutions. 
And also an opportunity for us is that we've um, developed a solution that's focused primarily on integration solutions for Oracle Cloud. Um, like everything we do, um, it's pretty much surrounding the Oracle stack. So, <clears throat> um, obviously the pre-built interfaces then also um, offer a key differentiator for our product and add clear value. So if we had to look at defining AST Cloud Connect, it's more than just a set of connectors. It is a fully configurable integration accelerator that's built on the Oracle SOA platform. It can be leveraged using traditional SOA suite or SOA Cloud Services or SOA CS. It integrates with both on-premise and cloud solutions. It provides a series of pre-built interfaces and it's highly suitable for those very complex integration uh, requirements. On the right hand side, you'll see a list of some of the uh, pre-built interfaces that have already been deployed. And there are many others in development or testing at this time. And uh, Piyush uh, shortly will share that list with you. So um, at this time, I would like to go ahead and turn things over to Piyush, who um, will um, continue on and give us a demonstration of this product and how it works. Piyush? Thank you, Melissa, for setting the context. And uh, before we jump into the product demonstration, let me explain Cloud Connect's architecture from a business user's point of view. So once you identified your integration needs, you know, the next challenge is to design and deploy those integration changes and make sure that they work seamlessly with your ERP cloud solution. Uh, with Cloud Connect's pre-built interfaces and the data maps that we have, is the big advantage that you have is you don't need to worry about the design part anymore. You simply take the ready interface, pre-built interface, and you start the validations to ensure that uh, your business needs, your specific business needs are met. Uh, and also that all you need to do in that case is start uh, using the real-time dashboards. That's a great feature product comes with. And you can start monitoring the changes that you've um, done, you're deployed, and uh, how's the performance on those. Product also comes with uh, inbuilt uh, notification capabilities, and these are great uh, because all you need to do is uh, when this automated processes are running, you're monitoring the different processes in the background, what are the different integrations happening. Uh, but if there is any error or failure, these notifications allow you to intervene only when needed. So uh, point is you identify your integration needs, you deploy them, uh, start the rapid prototyping, start monitoring these integration processes, and intervene only when uh, there is a need to do that. Let's take an example. Let's say you are in the middle of uh, an ERP cloud implementation, and uh, you, you, have, you need to get your supply invoices, for example, from your on-prem legacy applications to ERP cloud. Now, there is no need to set up data conversion processes or import programs which will take care of uh, uh, data generated by the uh, source application, massage it, and you know then pass it on to the ERP cloud. With the ready interface that we have available, you can simply deploy it and reduce your overall implementation time from weeks to days. So, uh, and one thing to keep in mind here is also that you know cloud technology has a lot of proven advantages, and we all agree on that. Uh, however, the adoption of cloud is not so easy, and that's why you know we see there are so many abandoned cloud projects. Uh, one of the objectives that we have through Cloud Connect uh, product is also to provide you a lever so that you can adopt cloud in a meaningful way uh, by reducing your integration effort and focusing more on the product itself rather than the process of getting everything set up. In the coming slides, I'll uh, briefly talk about the key features before we jump into the demo. So, but, but, but I mean, you know, just to highlight uh, one small thing on this uh, slide also, that you can take inputs from any of the SaaS applications, on-prem ERP solution, legacy system, and using uh, web services, uh, you know, file transfers or SQL, you name it, and uh, Cloud Connect is able to handle that integration mechanism. And you can send the data to cloud ERP, cloud uh, other cloud applications. And because it's based on SOA Suite and SOA CS, you know, it um, uses all those robust features and brings them to a level where you have an automated solution in place. So let's look at some of the features. Uh, first one is versatility. I spoke about uh, ability to um, use Cloud Connect to integrate with not just your on-prem applications, but also uh, some of the cloud applications or third-party applications. The way this integration works is uh, 
you can either have an inbound integration where you take the input from on-prem legacy application and get that data transformed into ERP cloud format and bring it inside. Other way of integration is an outbound where your ERP cloud generated data can be passed on to some of the other applications that you're using. It could be cloud application or even a third party system. Now, a key point to note is while you are getting this uh, uh, information from an uh, on-prem application, you need to, there is a need to validate that data. The, some of, some of the off-the-shelf point-to-point connector systems will allow you to do a standard connection between two systems, but what it lacks is ability to validate the data. So in, in, in yes, there's a data quality issue, uh, you know, you need to customize that solution. With Cloud Connect, you already have validation as one of the prerequisites. It's one of the steps, interim steps, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, also, the predefined mappings, what they allow you to do is you have a starting point where a standard flow for a particular, um, let's take an example of GL. If you have a standard flow, um, uh, you, you have a predefined map for that. But if you need to make any changes specifically for your business scenario, you can do those using the drag and drop user interface. It becomes really easy uh, for you to do that because you don't need a coding background or SOA background to do this. The feature itself allows you to do it in a meaningful way where you know, it, you're able to uh, do things on your own and in a, in very quickly. Continuing with some more features, um, we spoke about dashboards uh, briefly. What these dashboards will allow you to do is uh, once you have Cloud Connect running multiple different interfaces, you can track all those integrations uh, which are running on a daily basis or hourly basis even you can monitor them, what's the performance, what's happening in the overall system. And if you really need to de dig deeper and look at an uh, individual transaction, say you want to look at um, a PO, a supplier PO, which came into the system, how it uh, got transmitted through the entire process, you can monitor that using the drill down capabilities of those dashboards. Now the notifications, these are uh, extremely uh, flexible. You can configure them uh, the way you want to set them up. Uh, Cloud Connect has, you know, it will allow you to have attachments where you can send the files uh, with errors uh, as an attachment so that users can take action quickly, or it could even have a summary report so that users know what was the data which was sent across the systems. And uh, that way you don't need to intervene on a daily basis or on, in, uh, you can only do that on a case by case basis. So with those features, um, what I'd like to do now is jump into a product demo and we'll look at uh, two use cases. Our first use case is going to be an, uh, an inbound integration from a legacy application. We'll see how, uh, how the GL data that has been generated in an on-prem system, how that will flow in your ERP cloud. Okay, so uh, this is what our blueprint is going to be. In the demo, I'll show you how uh, uh, data generated by on-prem legacy system will uh, will have a CSV file, um, and that CSV file will be put on the secure FTP server. Now, uh, as, as I said earlier, Cloud Connect can have multiple different ways of integration. It could be a web service, it could be SQL, it could be a file-based data transfer. For this particular demo. We're looking at a CSV file, which would be uh, taken by Cloud Connect, validated, transformed, and then uh, uploaded to uh, ERP Cloud. So Cloud Connect takes that file from the secure location. It will validate based on the rules that you have configured in the system. That way, if there are any failures to meet the norms that you specified, that uh, we can send out an error notification, um, your uh, users from finance team or someone can correct that data, and then we can run the same process again. It, it also does an important step of transforming the data into ERP cloud conformant uh, uh, format so that uh, you can upload it, the data in the way ERP cloud understands it. And then we also send a notification so the users are aware all the time what is the, what is the progress on the overall task. With that, uh, let me show you a demo. For this demo, the systems that we're going to use is one is an FTP application where I'm going to show you how file transfer happens. And we're going to use AST's um, ERP Cloud instance 
to look at uh, how the zip file got uploaded to UCM and all of that. Uh, I will also be showing you uh, Cloud Connect's, uh, the instance of Cloud Connect that we've deployed on SOA CS, again, EST's own instance. But uh, that's an automated process. Typically, you won't really be seeing that. For this demo, I'll show you that also. So let's look at our uh, demo. This is my application for uploading uh, files. This is a ERP Cloud's FTP location. And I have my folder on the left-hand side. Right side, we have the folder structure on FTP server. We're going to upload a file to this flow. I'm browsing through GL generic. This is going to be one of the application where I'll be moving the file. The file I'm opening now is a sample file. It has three records. You'll notice that there are journal entries here. Uh, some of the fields where we do the validations based on data. Um, my first record here is a debit entry for $101.80. And I have two more records here, which uh, add up together $201.80, which basically match the debit entry. Now I'm going to drop another file and I'm doing it deliberately because this file has a few errors. I wanna show you how validations work. So once I drop this file on FTP server, um, you'll notice that it's in, under incoming folder. I'm going to move it to uh, in process folder. Now, um, what will happen is uh, we'll go to our SOACS instance and I'm going to run a process, a polling process, which is typically configured. This runs uh, on its own, it's scheduled process in ESS, uh, but let me just quickly run this process. So once I submit this, uh, what will happen is we will poll the location where the file was uploaded and we'll start validations. If the validations are successful, file will be moved to in-process folder, which hasn't happened in, in this case because uh, I knew that there are some errors. But let's do, let's take a look at the folder, the base folder where we had put this file. This is GL and generic. If I refresh this, file is gone from here. That means we put, picked it up, but it wasn't processed successfully. So I should really be expecting an error notification here. So let me refresh this again. There it is. So I get an email pre-validation field and uh, I'm going to find out the reason why this pre-validation failed. So let me open this uh, file and do a quick preview. So I noticed that my debit amount and credit amount do not match. So this file was not uploaded to ERP Cloud. I'm going to take another file now, the file we saw earlier, um, the file with three records, and I'll drop this file. Now, this time we know the records are valid. Uh, when we run the uh, Cloud Connect process again, this file really should be a moved to in-process folder so that we don't process it erroneously again. And once we process it, our next step is going to transform that data into ERP Cloud conformant format, and then upload a zip file to UCM. So let me go to in process folder. I see that there's a file there and we've added a prefix to it just to differentiate and you can use that for our log purposes later. Looks like the process has completed. So this is our AST Cloud, uh, AST is ERP Cloud instance. I'm going to look at file imports and exports. Basically, I, I'm looking for a zip file which was uploaded to UCM. So let me search for that file. I see that there's a zip file and the zip file would have a CSV file in a format that's acceptable to ERP Cloud. So we'll see how that uh, format has changed in this particular CSV. I see that there are three records we have added a journal number here, and I'm going to look at, look for a notification that is going to tell me as a user that when this process ran successfully, uh, where, whether we get a notification or not. So that's my new notification. And it says generic GL import was completed, and we have imported the data into interface table. Hold on to this, I'll explain that uh, import to interface table and what different variations occur there. But I see that there are three records, my debit and the credit entry records are matching. So as a, as a you know, user from uh, finance team, 
I just saw that I was able to get my GL information from an on-prem application to ERP Cloud in an automated manner. And I also get a summary of that. So uh, the point I was going to make about interface table is that's an option or rather a configuration in the product itself. What we advise our customers to do is uh, when they initially deploy this interface to have data flow to the interface table alone so that someone from finance team can validate the data and then they can post the journals to base tables manually. But once you're comfortable that uh, the process is uh, taking care of the data uh, validations, everything correctly, we can change the configuration and this data can start flowing to your base tables in ERP Cloud directly. So that's our first use case. Now, the second use case is going to be an outbound flow where uh, we'll look at some positive pay and ACH files, how these are transmitted to uh, any of your bank. So whenever, so anyone with finance background here would know that uh, positive pay file essentially deals with the checks that you issue to your business associates, your pays, and that information really needs to flow in a timely manner to banks because if that doesn't go to the banks in a timely manner, as a user, if I go to bank to encash my check, my valid check will be treated as a fraudulent check and you don't want that to happen to your business associate. So um, timely transmission is the key and we'll look at how Cloud Connect can really help you do that. So this is our blueprint again. We'll, we'll generate two files, one a positive pay file, another ACH file in ERP Cloud. And from the secure location where these this files are uh, stored, will pick those and transmit those to your bank's SFTP server. And in the process, there's a notification that's sent out. We'll see how that notification shows up. So let's uh, begin with, let's look at the demonstration itself. Again, this is the same um, application that I have the secure location. This is my ERP Cloud's secure location. And this is the folder structure where my files uh, for ACH and positive pay are going to reside. This is an outbound going flow. I have a folder for ACH. And similarly, I have a folder for positive pay. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have files currently uh, in, the disk, in the target folder. Similarly, let's look at uh, the bank's FTP server location as well. I have uh, created a folder structure that matches my target source folder structure. So again, I don't have any ACH information here available yet. Similarly, I don't have any positive pay information available yet as well. So what I'll do now is again, go back to our uh, ERP Cloud instance. And this time I'm going to submit request to generate an ACH file. Let me go to payments menu. And I'm going to use a pre-built template uh, to submit a ACH uh, request. ACC, ACH, say, 103, and I'll use a pre-built template. Once we submit this request here, uh, and, and this process can vary from uh, company to company, your enterprises may have different uh, processes, but idea is once ACH file is generated, uh, this particular location will see that file. Uh, let me refresh this. Okay, so I see an ACH file has been generated. If I open this file, uh, this is a format which was given by bank. There is pay information here, and the uh, rest of the format is what bank had requested, so we can generate the file in that format. Now, what we'll look at is, uh, uh, we'll see if we have a positive pay file or not. In case, the, uh, sorry, sorry, so positive pay. I don't have a file here. I'm going to go back to Cloud Instance and generate positive pay file as well. Positive pay file generation is typically takes slightly longer, but in the meanwhile, uh, one, zero, one. so in the meanwhile, what I'm gonna do is also explain that once positive pay file is generated, how um, Cloud Connect processes those files. So let me submit this, this is submitted. Let's go back to the folder. Yes, yeah, so a file hasn't been generated. But uh, what happens is once these files are available here, we're going to run um, a Cloud Connect process manually. This is a pooling process 
that picks this file based on the configuration and it transmits this file to another location. So that's my positive pay file, my pay information, Javed Muhammad, and amount $2,000. Let's close this. So we have the files in the target system in the location that we expect it to be. On the source side, on the bank side, we still don't have these files. To get those files transmitted, I'm going to run Cloud Connect polling process that I just mentioned. So let me go back to our sources instance. This is a Cloud Connect instance, outbound polling process. Once I submit this, uh, as I was saying, uh, we will verify the configurations in place, look at the target system and the, so the destination system, and we'll send the info, we'll send these files as is to that location. So you see my ACH file, my positive file is gone from cloud FTP server. ACH file has also moved. I'll go to bank FTP server location. And if I refresh this positive pay folder, I would see a file with a different naming convention. Same for ACH, let me refresh this. I see that ACH file has moved to bank location. File itself is the same, content hasn't changed. We simply transmitted it securely from one location to another. Um, now I'm gonna look for a notification that comes from the system. So that's my first notification. We see that a notification sent to the finance team, someone from AP, that a positive pay file has been sent to such and such bank, and it has been sent, sent successfully. Similarly, there'll be a notification for ACH. So we can set up these notifications separately for each file transfer, and it can be done at the bank level. You can have this information going to 10 different banks. All of those are configured here. Uh, point is Cloud Connect can really help you automate the entire flow, and that way you don't need to worry about whether the file has been sent in a timely manner or not. As soon as ERP Cloud generates uh, ACH file, uh, the polling process or the scheduled Cloud Connect process will take care of transmitting it to the bank in a secure manner. So those were our two use cases, and I've highlighted those in um, here. So we only saw two of more than 40 plus different integrations that we already have available. Some of the common flows, like journal import, supplier information, or you know, requisitions, purchase orders, all of these are common flows, and we have pre-built interfaces which can help you expedite your overall implementation using these. We are also working on new uh, interfaces. Our uh, development team is working very ag aggressively to clear the backlog, and you'll only see this uh, list growing from this point onwards. Now, now that we've looked at what Cloud Connect has to offer or what it can do, um, let me also talk a little bit about who should really be looking at Cloud Connect as a, you know, a useful solution or a prospect solution. So if you are a, a decision maker or if you're, uh, if you're head IT organization, uh, IT team in your organization, you are constantly thinking about how to help your business go to market faster, how to get uh, some of the integrations done faster. Or you know, Let's take an example. If you're going through an EBS upgrade to ERP Cloud, you, you know, you don't want to spend time on figuring out when the integrations will be complete, what will happen. You would rather focus your attention on uh, making sure that your new system is being adopted by your user base. So Cloud Connect's pre-built interfaces are greatly going to expedite your overall implementation time. And you know, we've, we've seen where people have, uh, instead of weeks, they've finished their integration effort in days. And you know, that's a really a big plus when you're considering um, overall new cloud system adoption. If you already have Oracle SOA products, uh, Cloud Connect can help you derive uh, returns on that investment because you have a ready framework now and it's going to help you uh, build new integrations in a seamless manner, in a faster manner, so that you get uh, the benefits of your investments sooner rather than later. Uh, if you are also considering some of the Oracle SaaS products, this is a great opportunity to, for you to consider <clears throat> Cloud Connect because um, 
we have a lot of pre-built interfaces specifically for cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud, Fusion Cloud, and um, not many other um, official products can boast of that capability. So uh, while you're considering this, you would also have a logical question that, you know, so why? Why should I really look at what are the kind of benefits I'm looking at? So we did an analysis where we consider, <clears throat> excuse me, three different scenarios um, where we have low, medium, and high complexity integrations. And over the years, we see how your investments pan out. So uh, this is an instance where we had a dedicated SOA CS and Cloud Connect was deployed on top of that. So we see that uh, by the end of your third year, you're looking at a reduction in your total cost of ownership of about 28 to 45%, which roughly translates to about 300,000 of savings. You know, that's a big savings. You can focus that time and energy and uh, dollars on something else to get uh, some other systems up and running. So that's a clear plus here. Um, what, what I would like to do at this point is kind of hand over the control back to Melissa so that uh, we can do a summary, quick summary, and then open the floor for questions and answers. Melissa, thank you. Great, fabulous, thank you, Piyush. Um, so we have been kind of discussing this throughout the um, entire presentation, what are the benefits of AST Cloud Connect? Um, obviously, it's platform-based integration and the pre-built inter interfaces um, together combined mean you have a faster time to market and lower overall costs. And that's pretty much what everybody's looking for, right? Um, our reusable framework reduces integration timelines from weeks to days, <clears throat> and it offers significantly lower total cost of ownership. In addition, AST Cloud Connect aligns with Oracle's Cloud First and Coexist strategies. So that's a, an added benefit to the tool. So thank you, Piyush, for the demonstration. Um, and thanks to our attendees. At this time, we're going to go ahead and open the floor to questions and answers. We have a, uh, quite a few uh, questions that have come in during the um, uh, during the presentation. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start uh, with some of those. Uh, if you do have a question, please go ahead and uh, type that um, into uh, your question panel in the control panel. There um, is a feature there where you can type your question in. Okay, so um, the first question came during uh, your discussion of the technical architecture, Piyush. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe it's related to that. Um, in Oracle, um, only cloud or different clouds like SOA Cloud, Fusion Middleware Cloud are there. Well, so uh, as I explained, Cloud Connect sits on top of SOA, you know, Oracle SOA. So it can be on-prem for Oracle SOA Suite, or it could also uh, it, it also works with SOA C as the new service that Oracle started offering. So it works seamlessly with both of those, and uh, it uh, it uses all of the features that SOA uh, Cloud and SOA Suite provide, and it gives you an integration platform which goes way beyond point-to-point -point connectors. Okay, thanks. Um, next question, um, does Cloud Connect come with any pre-validations included? That's a great question. So uh, uh, I'm going to refer back to the flow that we just saw for GL. For example, I mentioned there are a few validations on whether the debits and credit entries are matching or not, whether we have the proper journal information or not. And those validations do come um, uh, pre-packaged with the interface as well. We have the data mappings in place. We have these, some of these validations. Uh, however, what would be of bigger interest to you would be the fact that if you have some business specific uh, validations to be put in, these are simple configurations in Cloud Connect and you can change those yourself and have all the validations which are specific to your need and have everything working for you. Okay, a uh, question about bulk load. Uh, does this improve the time to load in any SaaS app from Oracle in any way? Um, that's a good question. So again, as I said, we can have multiple different uh, integration mechanisms with cloud applications. What we have noticed is uh, most of the customers uh, prefer to do web service uh, uh, web services as a preferred way of integration rather than uh, file-based loads or anything like that. But the bulk load capacity in itself, wherever we've used it, it is uh, uh, it has uh, we've seen superior performances because uh, the file-based transfer. Uh, can help you save some time. And it, it basically works really seamlessly. It's very efficient. Uh, it doesn't take a long time when we are running these processes. Okay. 
And a question in regards to mapping, do you have a mapping report that can be provided to the technical team to add additional fields? That's another great question. So um, what happens is when we uh, deploy a Cloud Connect, it also comes with all sorts of documentation, which will give you the implementation documents along with the interfaces and uh, uh, integrate uh, the maps that we have created. And you do have the ability to change those maps if you need to change those, and you would be able to do that using the UI uh, that we have provided for drag and drop uh, feature. All right. Um, next question. Are there any user-defined error messages included in the data file when it is error during pre-validation? This is a great question. Again, I really like all of these questions because they're on, on track and all of these features are part of the product where we have uh, error messages can be configured, they can be changed, users can have messages which are very specific to their use case. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, correction, user-friendly error messages. But they are user-friendly, right? Because they come via email. It's a, yes, it's an and we can configure all of these messages. Okay, very good. Um, Here's a good one for you. Uh, um, why do I need AST interfaces to AST's interface tool? Why not a manual method? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, I think a typical argument in favor of doing a manual uh, integration is when you have pressing need to get that integration going, and you don't want to wait for another solution to come in, and you just do some quick and dirty and move on. The problem is when you need to revisit that or need to do this all over again, you're doing everything from scratch again. So with Cloud Connect, what we what what you have is truly an ability to set up long-term integrations. You have the framework in place. And once you have set up a process, all you need to do is replicate that for your future integration needs. And you know, Cloud Connect along with SOA goes a long way in ensuring that rather than doing something with very short-term benefit in mind. Great. Um, okay, is interfacing with Sales Cloud in the pipeline? Absolutely, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, we have some of these uh, in the pipeline. As I said earlier, our, uh, our development team is working very aggressively to uh, groom the backlog that we have, and these, this is indeed in pipeline. You will see some of the uh, updates on this front in a short future, near future. Okay. Next question, what is the average implementation time for an interface and project? Um, so, so if you're using a pre-built interface, the implementation time can be really as low as two to four days. When you're building a new interface, you know, some let's say we don't have an interface which exists for your specific business need, it can be between four to six days, assuming we have the data mapping available. If it's not, then it might take slightly longer. But uh, thing to note is once an interface is built, it only takes a few hours to make changes and get it deployed. Okay. Um, how does it compare to Oracle ICS? Can't I use ICS for all my integrations? <laughs> That's a great question. So um, ICS is a fantastic product growing uh, by leaps and bounds every passing day. Um, but what, what happens is uh, ICS is uh, with an objective of providing a simple point-to-point -point connections between two systems. And these are focused more on cloud-to-cloud, -cloud standard uh, cloud applications, their integrations. It does not provide for um, any of the enterprise integration capabilities, um, the ones that we discussed, excuse me, such as tracking, error handling, orchestrations, retries, et cetera. If you need, you know, as, a, as an enterprise, if you see a need to use Anything beyond simple point-to-point -point, uh, connection, you should really consider uh, an integration in the platform at an enterprise level, something like uh, SOA and Cloud Connect together. A rule of thumb would say, uh, if you have more than four enterprise or cloud systems integration needs, and if you plan to adopt more of those, you should really go with Cloud Connect and robust uh, SOA platform like Oracle SOA. Okay. Um, we have, wow, well, we have a ton of questions from the, the line here. Um, how is the reprocessing of errored records done? Well, uh, what happens is the file which we had, uh, which we had seen earlier, if it, uh, if the file itself needs a change, we would ask the users to put that back in the queue so that it can be picked up and some of those error processes are handled. And it, it changes from interface to interface because the error handling itself 
the rules for error handling can be configured if you want to process some of those files. Again, uh, we can have a scheduler pick up that same file uh, so that it can be processed again. It can be done. Uh, there is a configuration change to be done that. This is a more specific question we can take up in detail if you want to figure out if you have a particular need for error handling and we can address that. Okay, um, next question. What is your release cycle? Do you provide updates when Oracle upgrades ERP or cloud solution versions? That's a good question. So um, our release cycles are uh, determined based on the backlog that we're currently working on and it's, uh, it's scheduled to deliver for a given particular cycle. Now, we also work with Oracle very closely uh, to get the access to their new ERP releases and ensure that uh, we are ready to upgrade to Cloud Connect. And you know, this basically this is done to give you confidence that when you upgrade to new ERP versions, your integrations are going to be fully compliant when you're using Cloud Connect. Okay. Um, I have an in-house SOA team. Can I implement Cloud Connect by myself? Absolutely. So uh, the documentation part that I mentioned earlier, um, we provide uh, our customers with detailed implementation documents, and we also do training sessions to make sure that uh, the client team or customer team, in-house teams understand and adopt Cloud Connect for rapid implementation. Uh, for customers who don't have in-house OR teams, we do have our implementation services. You are uh, welcome to use those, and we've, we've done multiple such projects. Uh, you can reap benefits from our expertise as well. All right, this question might be a little bit technical, but let's see. Um, at what level is mapping going to happen, i.e. either table levels, schema levels, table space level mapping? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is actually uh, going to a quite a technical level, and we can take this, uh, uh, we can reach out to uh, participant and provide more details, and we have sample documents, even those can be shared. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're getting uh, quite a few um, really technical questions here. Um, for those of you who have super um, technical questions, um, please um, uh, uh, re reach out to us via um, our contact information um, and um, you know, get in touch with us. We'd be happy to answer your technical questions uh, a little bit more thoroughly um, in private. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, we would like to go ahead and give you back uh, 15 minutes of your day. So we do appreciate all of your uh, participation, active participation with questions, great questions today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you on a webinar uh, with AST in 2017. Thanks. Have a great day.